Hello guys, I welcome all of you to this very interesting marketing case study video and as you saw in the banner we are going to discuss about Listerine and how it leveraged fear marketing to its advantage. Now if you are a business owner, a social media marketer, a marketer, digital marketer, a freelancer then this video is going to be super 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 insightful for you because after this video you will get a clear insight into how should you promote your product or service, how should the communication be and how can you use this term which is on the screen fear marketing right if you don't know about this term or if you want to get those kind of insights then watch this video till the end because each and every part is going to be crucial because i'm going to talk about various phases and each phase is important for the insights that i'm going to give so without any further ado let's get to it digital nebula aapka apna digital marketer हेलो गाइस मैं हूं आपका अपना डिजिटल मार्केटर डिजिटल निबुला एंड इफ यू आर न्यू टू दिस चैनल कंसीडर सब्सक्राइबिंग एंड लाइकिंग दिस वीडियो इफ यू वांट वीकली एंड डेली डोज ऑफ मार्केटिंग वीडियोस सो एज ऑलवेज आई हैव अ प्रेजेंटेशन रेडी फॉर यू एंड विदाउट एनी फर्दर अडू लेट्स गेट टू इट सो नाउ वी विल मूव ऑन टू द प्रेजेंटेशन एंड बिफोर मूविंग ऑन दिस आई हैव केप्ट दिस स्लाइड टू गिव यू अ कॉन्टेक्स्ट अबाउट द इशू एंड दैट इज द फेज 1 ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर वीडियो दैट वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट Now, Listerine was launched in around 1940s to 1950s, all a period. It was a product of its own kind because it was an antiseptic that could be used both for external and internal applications, and that was very unique, right? Now, the product was unique. Product was great, but it's not always about product being great. It is always a mix of product plus marketing, and that's why Listerine tried every trick in the book of marketing. it used banner advertising it used radio advertising it used tele advertising it used some elements of you know exploring the uh, kind of online elements that were there it used everything in kinds of in terms of advertisements dentists were used popular dentists were brought into the picture they were seen promoting the product as a trustworthy product as a product that could be used to i mean kill the germs or treat any health ailments but the impact was nearly zero no one was ready to change their toothpaste into a liquid by buying listerine no one was ready to change their i mean it was it was a kind of a, a daily routine for them to uh, you know uh, have the toothpaste and then brush their teeth no one was ready to change that because people were used to it people were not ready to trust this brand people were not ready to invest their money in this brand but this was the phase which went around till 1992 1994 but something that happened in 1990s was the turning point for this particular company and that's the reason why this company is one of the most successful and growing brands in this era and it is projected to grow at more than the percentage that it has been growing in the last few years right so in 1990s what listerine did is a very smart step it implemented the strategy of fear marketing now when it advertised its product that is listerine in a way that uh, so it it utilized data as well it did a lot of research that almost 25% of the population in this entire world goes through the problem of bad breath right and no one likes that listerine leveraged that it showed people advertisements where a young and a pretty girl who is very very charming right is is sitting across a tennis court there's a charming guy who is coming close to her but because of the bad breath at the last moment the guy went away and there was a feeling of disgust and the girl felt very bad and was seen crying and weeping in that particular advertisement now this was the exact strategy which persuaded american women almost 80% of the american women to buy this product and try it out and keep it in their household because they never wanted this scenario to happen with them and same was used in different market segments there was an advertisement wherein uh, it was shown in case of parents that how a bad breath can have an impact on their children they don't want to come closer or though they don't want to have an interaction with them because of the bad breath same was taken in case of a group of friends that a person is being ridiculed because of bad breath and is not included in the parties or the group get togethers that were happening i would say it marketed a feeling of being left out it marketed a feeling of sadness uh disgust that was there and this fear 
compelled almost 80% of the Americans to try out this product and now Listerine is almost present in 60% of the households in the American market. In Like on a daily basis, the, these people that I'm talking about, the 60%, they can't live without Listerine. It is, it is, it, you can include it in a part of the essential daily kit of those people. So that is the kind of impact that fear marketing has. Now, some examples to show you on my screen that you see. Now, bad breath was not being advertised by the name of bad breath. Listerine did another smart move. It created a new name for bad breath which was advertised by the name of halitosis. You'd be shocked to know halitosis was advertised as a health ailment where bad breath comes out due to the formulation of bacteria but halitosis is not a health ailment. It was nothing but just a Greek uh, translation of bad breath. It was nothing and it was advertised in a way because of the name like halitosis it feels like a big big issue that has happened right so this was another marketing strategy that helped listerine where it is today right it was a very very smart move very brilliant move that it did right now you can see on my screen the kind of growth that is expected it's a 1.57 billion dollar industry in 2018 and it is expected to go through to 3.38 billion dollar industry in 2025 and Listerine is one of the top key players that you see on my screen. It has even crossed Philips in the kind of market that is operating. It has crossed Colgate, the dominant player since the 1990s. It has crossed that and it is on the top, right? The thing that I'm trying to say here is once when we discuss this particular slide when we discuss about fear marketing now it is very important to understand that it should be implemented in an ethical manner now what is listerine doing it is advertising fear for a good cause now listerine is an antiseptic it helps in killing germs it has been proved by the dentist it has been testified by the dentist so it's a good thing that people are buying it it's a kind of a product that adds on to people's life on a daily basis but if you do that for a product where you know that it won't add any benefit, it is not beneficial. If you're lying out to the public, if you're lying to people, then your trust factor will always be broken. Your brand loyalist will never form. So always understand that line between the right kind of fear marketing and the bad kind of fear marketing. Already fear marketing is being used by a lot of insurance companies, by a lot of other companies. But before this line, it's good but if it crosses this line it's not actually an ethical practice so keep that in mind for all your social media gimmicks for all your uh, content marketing strategies include some kind of fear marketing don't overdose it because when you overdose fear it kind of gets very irritating have it once in a while and keep it in a way that arouses that kind of interest in your product or service and mix it with kind of humor marketing and all other kinds of marketing and have it in your content strategy so that was it from my side digital nebula signing off and please do subscribe to my channel please do like this video please do comment down your views on this interesting marketing case study because your one like your one subscribe will motivate me a lot see you guys in the next session thank you so much take care